Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Just over two weeks ago I released a video that showed for the first time 51 images that were taken in 2002 by the robot pyramid rover inside the Great Pyramid's Queen's Chamber Northern Shaft. The amount of views the video got, as well as the response from viewers, and also the amount of emails I received from fellow researchers, has been overwhelming and encouraging. I'm currently collating dozens of opinions, ideas and interpretations concerning the images, and somebody has also kindly offered to have the images professionally enhanced. In time I'll make a follow up video taking everything into account, showcasing the various ideas as well as my own. A few days after releasing the video, the great Christopher Dunn, researcher and author of the well known book, The Giza Power Plant Technologies of Ancient Egypt got in touch, and he offered to share his opinions not just with me, but with the viewers of the Ancient Architects channel. Dunn's Giza Power Plant Hypothesis is arguably the most popular alternative theory for the function of the Great Pyramid, and even though it is something I've moved away from in recent months, I do respect the work that Chris has done, and I'm more than happy to share his ideas on this channel, because, as I always say, I do keep an open mind as I continue to learn and dig out new information on this fascinating ancient structure. Nobody can say hand on heart that they understand the entirety and complexity of the Great Pyramid, and that's because there is still so much we don't know. There are still so many unexplored and unexplained anomalies and voids, and most of them have only been detected in the past 40 years. For example, it took us 20 years to finally see inside the Queen's Chamber Northern Shaft. And now, all of a sudden, we are trying to understand what the images show, because things like this cavity were certainly unexpected. The best we can do at this moment in time is hypothesise based on the information available to us, and Christopher Dunn, like me, does listen to fellow researchers, does look at all of the evidence and does keep an open mind. He also adapts his own ideas as new information becomes available, as you'll see in this video. The only way we can find the truth is to think for ourselves, listen to others and ask questions. It really is a team effort. Every hypothesis on the Great Pyramid has to explain and include every anomaly, and researchers and the public need to be able to respectfully discuss ideas, to point out the positives and the negatives, and then we can all get closer to the truth. I hope we can all do that on the Ancient Architects channel. What Christopher has done for the viewers of this channel is put together a short presentation on his work, and for the first time, he is offering his views and opinions on the images from the Queen's Chamber Northern Shaft, and how they affect his famous Giza Power Plant hypothesis. Chris wrote, narrated and created a video for us, and so without further ado, here it is. Please leave your thoughts, ideas and observations in the comment section below, because, as always, your opinion is important to all of us. Hi everybody, this is Chris Dunn. I'm the author of The Giza Power Plant, Technologies of Ancient Egypt, published in 1998. I would like to comment on the video recently released by Matt Simpson on the Ancient Architects channel of not widely distributed photographs taken in 2002 inside the Great Pyramid's Queen's Chamber Northern Shaft. For those who know nothing about the theory described in my book, in a nutshell, it describes the Great Pyramid as a machine that was designed to draw energy from the Earth and through various steps concentrate and convert that energy to microwaves in the King's Chamber. The theory describes the Queen's Chamber function within this machine as a facility that mixes two chemicals to create hydrogen. Hydrated zinc was delivered through the Queen's Chamber northern shaft and a dilute hydrochloric acid solution was delivered through the Queen's Chamber Southern Shaft. The delivered quantities of each solution was controlled by a small crack in the wall block and the head pressure, which was determined by the quantity of solution in the shaft. The hydrogen fills the interior chambers and passageways 
and while it rises to the level of the king's chamber, absorbs the energy building inside, eventually resulting in the hydrogen reaching a higher energy state where conditions exist for maser or even plasma activity. I was alerted to this video by researcher Ben Fitzpatrick, who said that what had been revealed in Matt's video massively supports the theory I propose in the Giza power plant. Interestingly, Ben informed me of this discovery as I was writing about the Queen's Chamber for my new book, which is a sequel to the Giza power plant. I'd like to thank him and give Matt my congratulations for bringing this material to the larger public's attention for the first time. While some of these photographs appeared in an article written by Dr. Zahi Hawass in 2014, they were not widely distributed among the public at large. Quite correctly, Matt said that there seems to be a lack of inquisitiveness about the anomalies noticed in the photographs. In the video, Matt rightly points out that any theory about the function of the Great Pyramid has to logically be able to explain all evidence found within. I made a similar comment in my book. Also, following the scientific method, if new evidence is found, the proposed theory has to accommodate and explain it. If the theory cannot do that, then the theory cannot stand. New evidence cannot be dismissed or ignored. In the Giza power plant theory, I considered the evidence discovered by Rudolf Gantenbrink in 1993 as critical elements to the theory. The so-called door and the metal fittings protruding through it I theorized were installed in order to maintain fluid levels in the shaft, in order to not reduce the head pressure. I described the pins as electrodes that created a closed circuit when the fluid levels rose to cover them, and an open circuit when the fluid levels dropped. An open circuit signaled the need for more fluids to be pumped into the shaft, and I theorized that an inlet shaft through which the fluids were pumped was located somewhere behind the door and led to a subterranean chamber where the means to elevate the fluid to the necessary levels existed. I had also theorized that a continuation of the electrodes would exist and be connected to wires that alerted machinery or workers on conditions inside the shaft. That was the state of play in 1998. Things started to heat up in 2002, when an exploration of the Queen's Chamber Southern Shaft was planned by another robot team from Massachusetts, iRobot, who intended also to drill through the door and insert a camera through the hole to find out what lay behind. To say that I was excited about this new development would be an understatement. Prior to the exploration, predictions regarding what might be discovered started to appear on the internet and then on camera during the filming of the event. Zahi Hoas predicted that a sacred book would be found. German Egyptologist Renier Stadelman, who directed the work of Rudolf Gantenbrink in 1993, claimed that the so-called door was a false door for the king's soul to pass through it on his way to Osiris, which is represented by the star Sirius. He believed that the copper fittings were handles that the king would use to lift the door. Robert Baval, author of the Orion Mystery, predicted that behind the door would be a sedab, with a statue looking towards Sirius, and John Anthony West predicted that there would be just core masonry. Joining in the fray, I posted articles on my website with my predictions of what will be found, based on my analysis of the function of this machine. I also appeared on Coast to Coast, discussing it with George Norrie. During the interview, an Egyptologist called in and claimed that she knew what would be found, that it would be a space about 30 feet in length, and it would contain sacred sand. The articles can be found in the articles page at www.geezerpower.com. When the camera revealed just a space, the size of a bread box, and with the camera lights unable to fully illuminate the space or articulate in different directions, though he or us enthused that it was a very important discovery. After that, everything went quiet. 
I was disappointed in the results, but unlike others who had made their predictions, I didn't feel like mine were disproven either. I thought I detected a rectangular opening in the corner of the space and had commented that it appeared to be a small inlet shaft. The thickness of the door approximated the width I had illustrated in my book, so that was a positive find. We just needed more information. As it turned out, the Jedi exploration in 2011 revealed no inlet shaft in that space. Following that exploration of the Queen's Chamber Southern Shaft, the iRobot team sent their robot up the Queen's Chamber Northern Shaft and discovered a similar stone barrier. In 2002, the only image that was revealed of this barrier was a photograph with two electrodes, not unlike the southern set of electrodes, but exhibiting significant differences. From the photograph, one of the electrodes appeared to be electroplated. The electrodes looked like they would, as if they had been immersed in a zinc bath with electricity flowing from anode to cathode. The official SCA report records that the stone behind the electrodes was hollowed out. This is what Ben Fitzpatrick became excited about and contacted me. He wrote, I've just looked up recessed cathode, and it apparently helps to prolong the life of the cathode by extending how long it takes for the build-up to occur. I was able to post an update to my website incorporating the iRobot results. I made another prediction that the chemical inlet shaft leading to the Queen's Chamber Northern shaft will be discovered behind the door, if and when we will be able to explore behind it. I had been to Egypt in 2001 and remembered noticing a vertical shaft on the east side of the Great Pyramid. Unfortunately, I did not take photographs of it. In 2002 now, with my focus fully on the design and function of the Queen's Chamber Southern Shaft and the Queen's Chamber Northern Shaft, I contacted Mr. Amari Hillier, who was living in Giza at the time, and asked him if he could send me photographs of this feature. Based on the existence of vertical shafts close to the pyramid on the east side, and reported vertical shafts on the south side, I revised my drawing to illustrate the chemical inlet shafts I had previously surmised were vertically connected to a bedrock chamber, but were actually connected to chemical storage facilities on the outside of the pyramid, and for some length approximated the angle of the pyramid, thereby bringing them closer to surmised storage tanks where the vertical shafts are. Now I'm faced with accommodating new evidence and revising my theory again. I do this happily, for the photographs reveal that the inlet shaft, supplying the chemicals to the Queen's Chamber Northern shaft, is located in the lower section of the shaft rather than behind the so-called door. If we look at this image that was captured on the second bend of the shaft, we see evidence that proves a connection to the outside. An opening in the east or right wall exists approximately 96 feet from the opening of the northern shaft in the Queen's Chamber. Opposite the opening, there is a collection of trash from where the Pyramid Rover retrieved crumpled paper and site tickets. The site tickets are old, but certainly not as old as the Pyramid. How did they get there? It has been speculated that they were introduced into the shaft when the opening was cut after the Pyramid was built. My belief is that it is a part of the original design of the machine and its placement makes it closer to the vertical shaft located outside the Great Pyramid, near the center of the north-south axis. Looking at the photographs of these exterior shafts, we see a vertical shaft cut into the bedrock that has a center wall creating two shafts approximately three to four feet from the top. Looking down into the shaft, we see trash, blown sand, pop cans, candy wrappers, pieces of paper, and perhaps a sight ticket or two. Who knows? Also, what would we find if we removed all that trash and sand? How deep does it go? What would we find on the bottom? In 2002, I was shown a vertical shaft south of the pyramids and a distance away that was being cleaned out. At that time, they had reached 100 feet into the bedrock. So we have a logical source for the miscellaneous collection of trash and its route into the inside of the Queen's Chamber Northern Shaft. 
It gathers opposite the opening of the inlet shaft, and some of it slides down the shaft and accumulates. This is the only way it could have got in. The trash could not have come from the upper section of the northern shaft, and it's doubtful that it was carried into the Queen's chamber and just pushed up there. The most likely means is that it was blown in by a terrible sandstorm, maybe an energetic explorer who discovered an opening on the outside and started pushing up rods of steel or wood, but I doubt it. It's significant also that the floor in front of this opening is seemingly swept clean of debris and sand. This is probably the result of an occasional strong breeze wafting through. I had identified this shaft on the outside as the place where the chemicals were stored and delivered to the Queen's Chamber shaft. In 2002 I posted an article on my website illustrating this. The newly discovered location of the chemical inlet shaft into the northern shaft makes perfect practical and economic sense, considering that the distance would be shorter than if the inlet shaft was behind the so-called door. A useful experiment would be to install a watertight seal in the opening of the northern shaft in the Queen's Chamber that has a connector for a hose and pump water into it. And as the shaft fills, monitor the vertical shaft on the outside to see if it starts showing signs of being saturated or filling with water. It's a simple test. No robots and very little money. The southern shaft still holds the mystery of where its inlet shaft will be found. But it would be useful to conduct the same experiment there, too. A question has been raised about the potential for leaks out of these shafts, based on observations inside them. From my perspective, and what I've learned about the genius of the builders of the Great Pyramid, figuring out how to join and seal limestone blocks so that they are able to transfer chemicals from one point to another would be no challenge for them at all. That's all for now. Have a great day. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.